The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net. Margot felt quite exquisite as she dipped her fries in mayo, gracefully extending her pinky to the sky. See, she had just saved by getting Cox Mobile for her family. Yes, more lines, more savings, Margot. Brilliant. She finished her cherry slush drink with a triumphant... Exquisite indeed. Visit a Cox store and pay as low as $30 a line for four or more unlimited lines. Four lines required for $30 per line price, max of five lines. Prices exclude taxes, device activation, and other fees and charges. Other restrictions apply. Christopher Media. Let's make some noise. From Asmacore Studios near Detroit, Michigan. Oh, man. It's the Weedsman Podcast. I have no idea what's going on. And now... You have smoked yourself retarded. Here are the Weedsmen. You want to get hot? Welcome to the Weedsman Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Aaron. We're back uh, post Super Bowl. Yeah, it's Valentine's Day. The day we're recording Day. this, oh. it's February thirteenth. Oh, that, that's officially there's an official Valentine's Day. Well, I think it Wait, is, the so, internet has made it official. A TV show started. It makes no sense. I thought Valentine's Day was for people who didn't have boyfriends. So now people are cele- people with boyfriends, females, female yes. peoples. Remember, it's ladies celebrating. Hold on, I. Are celebrating Galentine's one day and then Valentine's the next? Yes, because the internet. Women are always stretching their shit out. They like gotta celebrate their birthday over multiple days. No, oh, yeah, I mean they're probably the ones that came up with it's my birthday month. That dude, fuck my birthday month. They're the ones that probably came up with that's, half birthday. That, that's the most outrageous. It's Galentine's Day. Oh, it's only the best day of the year. Every February 13th, it, my lady friends Was it invented by this show? Yes. This is the origin? Kick it yes. Style. Ladies celebrating ladies. It's like Lilith Fair minus the angst. Did she say the date and I talked over it? February 13th is she does, Galentine's she Day. She does specifically say So it wasn't mm-hmm. something that... Uh, I Actually, I think it was cut off. Yeah. But yes. February 13th is Galentine's. And also, the TV show has all, it spawned another day, too. Do you know what October 14th is? Uh, no, is it about the horse? No. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, Treat Yourself Day. Treat Yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Treat Yourself. Treat your, I can't, yeah. I shouldn't put the uh, R in there. It's I believe, officially Treat Yourself. I believe you, you have to culturally appropriate when you say... It's, that one. It is the name of the house. Yes. It's like when, you know, when a newscaster says, you know, Mexico. <laughs> On the internet, it is hashtag treat Y-O-S-E-L-F. Yeah. That's October 14th, you said? Yes. Okay. That's easy to remember. It's kind of like, uh, it's, it's kind of like an opposite Valentine's Day, right? Yeah, I get, yeah. Yeah. It's like on the other end of the year. It's in the middle of the month. Oh, it's not. It's not, it's not six quite months, it's eight months. Yeah, it's not it's not quite palindromic per se, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think that it should all be on the one day. It should all be February fourteenth. If you got somebody, it's Valentine's Day. If you don't and you're a woman, it's Galentine's Day. Well, no, they all. If had, you don't like, and you're a dude, it's treat yourself. Right. Well, hey, I, I just had to do a birthday and Valentine's Day all within 10 days of each other. So that yeah. was super fun and cheap. Wait, you got ahead of Valentine's Day? You well, did yeah, it we in did advance? It. Yeah, we did it We did it last weekend. Oh. Well, you can't do it That's after. That's cheating. That's cheating. No, they're doing it this yeah. weekend's also cheating because you're doing it after. Yeah. We got ahead. You're supposed to make time out of your busy week. Well, when we yeah. live an hour and a half from each other, right. we see each other on the weekends. There you go. And that is uh, hopefully a recipe, probably a recipe for a lasting relationship. You know? Well, it's like it's when you see each other, anyways. Yeah, we both got at this point in 2024. Everybody's got a job, and let's be honest: at our age, sometimes there's children involved and all that crap. Mm-hmm. There's your Monday through Fridays. Trust me, initially I had, I wasn't like I'm not a fan of this, and I was like, wait a minute, hold on here. Let's think about what I have versus what I don't have. What I have is my <laughs> Monday through Friday uninterrupted, and I can do my routine. Same with her. Yeah. And then the weekends, we come together. Yeah. Sounds perfect. Yeah. I'm jealous. And Sunday afternoon, see <laughs> So how was the Super Bowl? Uh, Did you- 
from what I remember. Yeah. Boring <laughs> until but the end. It see, yeah, it was like kind of uh, it was kind of locked up there for a while, huh? Yes, but everyone, to, everyone bitches about that. But if you remember, well, it's a game of strategy. Probably right? not. This is where age different comes in. Uh, the Super Bowls in the '90s, everybody hated mm-hmm. those because those were blowouts. Like everybody, yeah. Yeah, because it, it, they would always be wildly mismatched, and everyone would be like, "Well, this fucking sucks." This, like the game be over by like second quarter. How do they? How do you get them so wildly mismatched? If I mean, it's a merit based thing, it, right? It's not. It's not the like game, there's the, the game was different. The divisions okay. were different. Like there, there was like I think four less teams. Yeah. Wait. So they, do they have divisions like in? Because in baseball, yes, that used to be like the. Uh, the American League and the National League. And the National League. It still is. Right. Okay. And the best of each league would go up against each other in the World Series. Yes. So that's what the NFL does. They have the they essentially well, it's, They do? Well they have conferences. It's right. it might as well what the the MLB has call it the American Conference and the National Conference. But like it's yeah it, But but isn't there wouldn't it, so yeah, there's different rules in the AL and the NL. But, but you, but you would have had, but in the NFL, you would have played that team that season already, right? Not necessarily. I mean, there, there's not enough. Not all teams play against each other every season. No, really. You play against your division. There's three other teams in your division, and you'll play them twice. But, oh, but no, but then it it rotates. Like league makes a different schedule every year. Oh yeah. Oh okay. And the last Wait, so few years, it's been based on how you did the previous season. So the Lions will have a fun season next year because they because they're going to be matched up against yeah, some they, tough they competition. They won a lot, so now they're going to play other teams that won a lot. Okay. This actually sounds like it makes a lot more sense than what they do in baseball because, like, you don't. You, you're pulling from two different pools of the best. So you could have something that is like seriously mismatched. Well, to get to what you're saying about the mismatch in football, I feel uh, they used to not make the schedule like I just said, and that's how you mm-hmm. get a team. That's how you get the wild mismatches. Well, how would they pick? How would they decide who plays who then? If they don't make, I don't like, know. Flipping was, a coin every fucking weekend. I was like 12. I don't know <laughs> how they did it. But teams could get way easier schedule, you know, and yeah. But then you get what we had Sunday, where it's an evenly matched defensive battle for three quarters, and everybody bitches, "Oh, this game's boring." It's like, what do you want? Yeah. If one team beats the shit out of the other, you're bored. If it's a it, if it's an evenly matched game, you're bored. Yep. Well, it's it's got to be paced well to be entertaining. Well, it's like it's like the Marvel movies. They're getting really boring and repetitive because it's like it's all action, action, action that ends with the big action scene. By the time it gets to that last big action scene, I'm tuckered out. I'm just fried. I just like it's just colors and shapes. Like I have no idea what's going on. And but whereas like uh other movies that end in big explosive ways but build that tension up. Mm-hmm. That's very effective, and now I'm like fully engaged well, you know, at that did, critical the moment. Fourth, the fourth quarter, all of a sudden, I was like, "Hey, it's a game!" Right? It seemed right. like it seemed like it. Yeah. Which, by the way, halftime show, much like the game, boring till the end yeah. when Lil John and fucking Ludacris showed up and they were roller skating and all that <laughs> shit. <laughs> they were roller skating. Yeah, like, what, the half, like the last two years, it was last. It was Usher or Usher for those of you. Who've been yeah. fans from, from way back. And it was Rihanna. Like, I figured these have to... I mean, I'm not trying to say these artists aren't... Like, don't have a large body of work. Uh-huh. But, like, to me, if you're playing, like, Super Bowl halftime show, like, you gotta have nothing but steak. Like, you gotta have... You gotta right. have nothing but a string of number ones. And I don't think Usher and Rihanna fall in that category. Oh really? I don't know. Uh, okay, if I, if I put this. I don't know about. Well, do do our moms know who Usher or Rihanna is? That's my. Yeah, I get I get what you mean. Like it should be a broad appeal, and and and, and have everybody being like, oh yeah, oh, yeah and, I know and, this and to song. To make it relative to our age, 
do do people ten years older than us know who the fuck Usher and Rihanna are? Yeah. Like that's what I'm getting at. Do, do people, people ten years 50- younger than us know who Usher is? Is he still like he's been around for a he, while? Huh? He he seems to throw out like a hit every five years since yeah. like 2010. He's not like I mean I know I still hear his shit out there. He's not like, like he was when he first came out. Like when he first, yeah. I'd argue like this halftime show for him was twenty years too late. When he first came out. It was like hit, 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 yes. hit. Yes, you couldn't get away from the fucking dude. Yeah. He was the Bobby with, Brown of his same generation. Same with Rihanna. If that halftime yeah. show last year was a 2010, holy fuck. Like, well, yeah, but I think that's like, well, I see your point. I think it's completely appropriate to have the culture of the NFL be 10 years behind the popular culture. But, but the, I'll give you that. But the year before that, to to to... to to back my point up was the Dr. Dre one. Yeah. Where it was him and Eminem and yeah. Squir- it was just like hit, 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 sure. hit, hit. It was nothing but hits like for fucking 15 minutes. It's also too late, but. No, but I guess, <laughs> but, but now I'm getting back to my argument about the, 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 the catalog, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you think there might be some personal bias there since uh, Eminem and Dr. Dre have a catalog that means something to you? No, it's, I'm I'm coming from someone who was a radio programmer. Yeah, I get you. Like, or, or someone who DJed in a bar. Yeah. Like, yes, 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 yes. Like, I wasn't playing. Uh, Riri got a few spins after midnight. You know. Uh huh. You, you played Umbrella. You played fucking uh, SOS. So, what would be the ideal? No, trust Usher. Usher was def- Usher was definitely in the after midnight. You know, when yeah. everybody was hammered, he was in the the. Nothing but hits, couple hours. So, so who would you program for the halftime show then? How the fuck has Jay Jay Z been in charge of this thing for five years? How has he not played it? Yeah, that's a good question. His wife like had, prime no, candidate. his wife played it before he was even in charge of it. Yeah, how has he not played it? So he's got like a, a like a major interest in the NFL. Like he's he's uh, yeah when. Uh, uh, they were getting shit for uh, having not enough diversity in their halftime show. He's their black friend now, and he approves their oh, halftime okay. shows. It's essentially what it, the deal that they have. Wait, so uh, does he? Is he like a part owner of anything, or no? He's so he's like a consultant. Yes. So the NFL the, is giving big, him money. One of the biggest grifts in the world. That's for him to, to for him to put his stamp. Not gonna. I mean, like forty five. Bless him. If you get a job as a consultant, you did it. You that is the biggest yeah. grift in the world. Hey, dude, somebody knocked on my door tomorrow and said, "Hey, excuse me, we're looking for uh, people who are opinionated about white people things and have an idea what white people like. We want to pay you money to tell us what white people like." Okay. How much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what I like all day long. All right. Hell, I do it on this podcast all the time for free yeah. every week. We're going to go to the grocery store. We're going to get some mayonnaise. We're going to swing <laughs> yeah. out. We're going to swing to the gap and get some khakis. <laughs> Amen, brother. So no no real drama at the at this uh, Super Bowl? Even with Taylor there? Well, no, there was, Wasn't there I mean, some no, the report drama that was like, the, Ka- Kanye they, was there, right? The, I mean, the drama was the Chiefs won in overtime at like the last second. That oh, was the drama. Sure. I mean, if you're into that. <laughs> I don't know the juicy shit. <laughs> oh, uh, Tay-Tay's boyfriend was yelling at his coach. People were upset about that. Is that the meme that he was like yeah. in his face and he's yeah. just looking sad? Mm-hmm. He's looking like Wilford Brimley forgot his diabetes meds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. There was that. Oh, I finally. What was what was he actually yelling about? Was he just like what? Was he really like what the fuck? Football shit. Yeah, yeah. These guys. I'm sure it gets hot down there. Yeah. Uh, But by the way, only the second time ever I've watched the Super Bowl at a bar. Oh yeah. Yeah. My we we were supposed to have a a party, but my buddy who was hosting it's been dealing with like kidney stones for two weeks. So oh, so Saturday afternoon. Oh, brother. He's like, hey, no party. The pain so. I, I've heard is horrendous. I hope I never have it to oh. experience it myself. I just, I, I just watch him go through it. I'm like, oh, thank God I ditched soda 10 years ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, like hearing about kidney stones, like people telling me this, the plot of a Saw movie. They're like, that sounds horrible. I'm going to stay as far yeah. away from as possible. But anyway, so yeah, we had to, we had to regroup. I immediately and started drinking more water. <laughs> we ended up at a bar. And yeah, so, but saying that because I'm just now seeing the commercials like the last two days. Did you see any of them? The only one I liked was the Arnold one. I, I didn't watch any of them. Let's see. I do have a New York Times ranking, though, if they don't ad block me on this shit. I could play the Arnold one, uh, because it's, it's, it's audio gag. Trust me. Oh, I did. I saw Kanye's. Thank you, Agent State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Cut. Hey, Arnold. I'm hearing neighbor. It's neighbor. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. Neighbor. 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 Hey, let's go again. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Cut. Now what? Neighbor. Yeah. Neighbor. Just like it's written on the paper. Neighbor. <laughs> that was the sheep. And you know it. Neighbor. <laughs> Still no. Neighbor. Neighbor. Bah. Bar. Bar. This lady is in labor! Hunt! <laughs> Got a bit of a script change. You'll love this. Thank you, Agent State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Danny DeVito. That, yeah, that was Danny DeVito at the end, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so I figured I could play because it's heard him, an audio gag. I heard him on uh, Fly on the Wall recently, and he was, he was kind of a dud of an interview. I don't know... Maybe Who? he was sick or something. He sounded Who? kind of Danny down. Or yeah, Arnold. Devito. Oh, well, isn't he like ninety? Yeah, he's getting up there, isn't he? But yeah, I, did, I don't know. Like he just sounded like he just sounded old, I guess. But whatever, yeah. whatever. He tries to. I mean, they're they're trying to hip him up for TV and movies, but they, yeah, at the end of the day, he's a fucking old guy. Sure, sure. Like ta- Taxi was fifty years ago, mm-hmm. and he looked old when he was in Taxi. Yeah. Yeah, I saw. So, Kanye, did you see the Kanye one? He made, Kanye had a commercial. He apparently, his commercial oh is him on being recorded on his phone, and he's in his car, and he's like, "We blew all the four million on the ad. We didn't leave enough for the production for the commercial. So here it is. Go to Yeezy dot com. Y e e z y dot com. We got tennis shoes, some other stuff." And that's about it. <laughs> that's literally his commercial. I didn't get it verbatim, but that's, I got all the information that he got into his commercial in there. He pulled a fucking Tracy fucking Jordan. Yeah. Remember when Tracy was buying all the ad time because he wanted to curse? Yes. <laughs> well, for, no, he gets in trouble for cursing. And then he's like, oh. He just pays the fine. He's like, well, that, I just say I don't want to pay the fine, right? And then <laughs> Tina Fey comes to him. Is like, well, no, you can't because now the sponsors are pulling out. And yeah. He's like, well, then I'll just become the sponsor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's fucking Kanye pulled it. Fucking Tracy. He's like, well, it's all coming true. No one will fucking. Liz Lemon, I'm gonna get metal teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one's gonna advertise for me. I'll just have to. Hey, uh. Kanye, I'm still selling me shoes. Uh, go to Yeezy.com. Which, by the way, Adidas is quietly selling them again. They're not in trouble. That's, oh, really? That's who's making them. Yeah, I know, I know. But so, oh, no, that, they were just on no, the that deal. That came out months ago. It was, it was very, it was, it was in like the Friday night news cycle. Yeah. They're like, oh, by wow. the way, wow. we, we get all these Yeezys. We need to sell them, so we're gonna sell them. I mean, it just shows that like you can't cancel money. Right, you can you can try and cancel people all you want, but if those people are generating lots of money, the money's uncancelable. That's why I always find it shallow and so fucking bullshit when people do that. Like, cause yeah. Yeah, this is the United States. Follow the money. Mm-hmm. You know when people get quote unquote canceled when they stop making people money. I think commercials might be back in general. Now I didn't see any of these except for that one. Kanye one, yeah, because they but, found a way to get to put commercials in all of the generally, free stuff. Quote right. unquote, I'm, oh, we're watching. Well, it. commercials are definitely back in that they're now starting to invade all of the streamers that we were paying for separately, so that we wouldn't have to watch commercials. 
The same lie they told but, their parents about cable? Yeah. But commercials are also back in the way that I actually come across commercials. And I'm like, hey, those are actually funny and well done. Whereas it seemed like for the longest time it was just, it was just progressive commercials with hack jokes and, you know, fucking nonsense, just wacky like Starburst commercials. And they're like, I don't know, unicorn farts. Ugh. Yeah. But I, H. John Benjamin has got some, uh, I think they're progressive commercials where he's oh, yeah. voicing a pigeon. Tim and Retta. Yes. Yeah, and they're both really funny. Which, by and, the way, and they're saying. like decent jokes. Which, by right? the, my girlfriend's getting me into Bob's Burgers. I uh-huh. brought this up. How much fucking money has that dude made with his voice? All Holy of it. shit! Think you think? About, think about, well, you think he's made any of it with his face? No, it's it's, it's <laughs> always bit part. Like think, what when I first heard, he was fucking coach. No, he was Ben's son. He was uh, Dr. Katz's son. Yes, that's when I that's first right. heard Yes, him. true. Yes. Then he was coach then on home coach. movies. Then Archer. <laughs> There's a pretty big gap in between there where, I mean, he was doing steady voice work, mm-hmm. but he, he didn't have any, like, shows that, like, you could, yeah. Yeah. He didn't have any regular gigs, it seemed like. Then Archer, and then when Archer was, quote-unquote, wrapping up, which I think is still on. It wasn't last season, 10 years ago. Yeah, they keep stretching it out. Uh, yeah. They just get longer and longer. It's like they're doing the Curb you enth- Your Enthusiasm thing. Oh. Like, yeah, we're going. Okay, bye. I guess this is going to be the last of it. A few uh, years later, oh, oh, hey, we're back. Hey, what's up? Yeah, when that was wrapping hey, up, then he falls into remember? Bob's Burgers, which is going on ten years. Like that guy is. Just yeah, that made, movie is been a movie that that show has been going on a long time yeah, now. Like hasn't that it? guy has just made a ridiculous amount of bank with those pipes. Yeah. Good for him. Uh, what was the other funny? I, I guess not really like funny, but at least like well done and like well. The, there is a commercial for Reese's that I, uh, you know, um, what's his name from, uh, Arrested Development uh, from Smartless. I, oh, Jason Bateman? No. The guy who does all the, the voiceovers. Oh, stuff. uh, Will Arnett? Yeah, Will Arnett is doing, he's been doing Reese's commercials for Dude, a while. That is now. another guy. Which he does. Talk about the voice. Well, he does so much VO, you don't even realize. Yeah. I can usually, yeah, I can, yeah, I can tell. There's, he does some VO where he's not pushing his voice even, mm-hmm. and I can pick it out. I'm like, no, that's fucking Arnett. I can tell even when he's not doing the GMC trucks. Uh, yeah, but and you know who used to do? Yeah, he does a. He, there's a re- they're advertising some new big. There's I think it was a big caramel cup, mm-hmm. and he's like, there's, they we're making changes to Reese's and the whole house full of people. I don't know why they're all hanging out in the same house, like a bunch of weirdos. But they just start going nuts. Like the one guy, like smashes his head into the drywall. They're all screaming no, and he like, you know, breaks the coffee table. Just, lady jumps out the window, and then they all like reverse themselves when he's like, no, you can still get the regular ones. And anyway, oh, people were there was a mass event over the changes at Reese's. Yeah, they were torn, but. It was like, I just appreciated the fact that, like, a frog didn't jump into the scene and burp or, like, start right. talking and, you know, and then, like, a, a Yeti came in with a stick of deodorant and started eating it. They're like, I don't know, we're out of ideas. Weird shit seems to stick with people. Yeah, remember fucking... Everyone still remembers the Quiznos commercials, right? Yeah, or the... Or the- Puppy Monkey Baby. Yeah, the Puppy Monkey Baby. That was a Super Bowl commercial originally, yeah. wasn't it? That was the the Mountain Dew, right? Yep. What was the Mo- Mountain Dew had? Uh, oh, they had Aubrey Plaza in there. Oh, they did. Let's see. She flat affects her way through life with is the she... help of a carbonated citrus beverage. Is it citrus? <laughs> is, uh, is there a gambling or, or a substance abuse habit? We're going to find out. She, in the with last Aubrey? two years, has done a ton of commercials. I've seen her in like booze hmm. ads. I've seen her in like I've seen her in a ton of commercials. I don't know. She doesn't Who seem knows? like, especially with the image she tries to. She doesn't seem like the I'm gonna do a hundred commercials type. Yeah, 
the third party feeling that I get as, you know, just an observer like, of her career. Like, was there a divorce and she lost? Like, I get the feeling that, like, you know, she got, she kind of, you know, hit the, the bandwagon early on with, uh, with Parks and Rec. You know, that was like a long time, steady paycheck, a mm-hmm. lot of, uh, a lot of exposure. Everybody knew, like, she kind of, she definitely got typecast, mm-hmm. but she didn't even seem to shy away from that. No, she like, I guess what I'm gonna, she and, to and her more post, like the- her post Parks and Rec career, I don't think like took off like she wanted it to. So no, she's just, well, that's what I'm saying. She seemed to choose like after after she like spent like six years in the mainstream. It, to me, it seems like she was consciously choosing like. Indie type projects. Yeah. I, I think that was the idea. Like, yeah, I can just kind of do whatever I want now, but realizing, well, you know, if I want to do more, like, this is now the time to, if I don't start really pushing myself as an actor and, and people taking me serious about this, and not, mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing these fucking bit weirdo parts for the rest of my yeah. goddamn life until I'm the fucking, you know, old cat lady yelling at mm-hmm. people out the window. But now she's doing like, like I said, but, but so I think that doesn't just, lend itself to the. I, I don't. Know, maybe that's just we're Gen X, and, but yeah, the, the, uh, the, to that, me, that doesn't, doesn't seem that I'm going to do a bunch of commercials type. There isn't. A, there's not that type anymore, though. You know, it's the same way. Like everyone's talked about this, but you know, there used to be this dividing line between movies and TV. TV was was seen as more common, and if you were a higher class of actor, you didn't do TV. That was slumming it. Now, TV and movies, as far as quality, there's no difference. They can be just as shitty or just as excellent as anything else. Uh, so that, that, that's melted. But still, you had that boundary of like, well, I'm not going to full on, you know, I'm not going to prostitute myself for all these companies and cheapen my name and image. Uh, but they would do it overseas, it in right? Japan. In the old days, and they just do it in Japan. Right. It's like... Uh, what that's the Bill Murray movie that he did with Sofia Coppola, Lost in Translation? Yeah, you know, that's what that's what he's over there doing. And now even that that boundary has melted because people, I think, just realize across the board, both those involved and those not, like myself, go. Yeah, people got to work, you know, <laughs> and that's what you're making your money off of: is your voice, your face, your image. You know, your style. Like, so somebody wants to pay you to get a little bit of taste of that, you know, whatever it is that you have. Again, if it was somebody that was like, hey, you know, came knocking on your door, we want to pay you for your opinion. Absolutely. I, it doesn't matter if it's legit or not. Like, take that money. I don't know. I hope that, uh, like, it's cool seeing her in, in you know, like, uh, I think she was cast on, uh, Oh, what's the anthology show that HBO has now? The resort show, The White Lotus. Wasn't she cast in that? I think so. Yeah, so she's uh, she's getting some more, you know, high profile roles again. I hope she continues to do some weird shit. I know she's doing Broadway, or she's Is doing she? off Broadway or at least. Man, uh, Broadway adjacent. Maybe she just maybe she's one of those people who came out of the pandemic and was just like. I've been wasting too much time. I'm going to start saying yes to everything. Maybe. Yeah. So doing uh, a Mountain Dew commercial, hey, I think it's kind of perfect. You know, Mountain Dew has always been considered like the kind of weirdo drink, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the other... That was the drink that, you know, the kids that hang out under the stairs or... You know, in the back smoking cigarettes. That's what you'd find them drinking. Well, I guess the other thing I had with that ad, I don't know why I'm giving her such a hard time, but is, uh, uh, yeah, lay off my lady. Well, she, well, she was in her early twenties, like 15 years ago, like in Mountain yeah. Dew for the kids. Yeah. I still enjoy a Dew every now and then. Although most of the, mostly when I go to Taco Bell and get Baja blasted. I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is, isn't, isn't she out of the demographic? For Mountain Dew, yeah, I don't think so because the dem- the demographic has grown. See, I think you used to have demographics that were shifting, right? You'd have a set demographic of like you were, we're appealing to this age group, and you know you're you're, you're 
uh, people that you're serving go in and out. They age in and they age mm-hmm. out of that demographic. That was the old way of thinking. Now they're siloed demographics that follow throughout the age and they just ramp it up, right? So, you know, you like Ninja Turtles when you're a kid? Here's a $2 comic. You like Ninja Turtles when you're an adult? Here's a $200 action figure you can buy and put on your shelf. You know, fully posable, 12 inches high, yeah. looks just like the comic. That's the shifting demographic now. You're either shifting, you're either, you're either finding that specialized demographic and following it as it ages and gets more money, or you're just trying to broaden your appeal in general. The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net. ChristopherMedia.net. The Weedsman Podcast. Speaking of the Baja Blast, one of the new items, I don't know if we're going to see this at our, any of our local Taco Bells, but a uh, this looks as gross as it sounds, the Taco Bell's Baja Blast Pie, hmm. which uh, <laughs> is usually something you get for 50 bucks behind the Taco right. Bell. You get the Baja Baja Blast but, Pie. But go on. What, yeah. What's in this pie? How is what's... You can get... You can get the Baja Blast is thirty dollars, and it's an extra twenty if you want a pie. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it kind of looks like a key lime. Okay, right? okay. Like I might like gelatinous. Try that. You know, it, like anything. It's it, probably going to taste like chemicals and sugar, but I might try that. It's got. It's all based on texture, though. Like it's, if it's, that thing looks a little too like jelloey in texture. I, I don't know. My guess is that thing's at least 300 calories. Oh, I'm sure. Let's see. Oh, here's the description of the filling. was a thicker, creamy Baja Blast-flavored cream, and it had that fruity taste that's got those tropical notes and was topped with whipped cream. Shut up, your Taco Bell. I don't... Is this from Executive <laughs> Chef Lillian Garcia? Has this person had Baja Blast before, <laughs> like... I don't know. Like, what it, they described Mountain Dew as a fruit flavored drink. I was like, is it though? Like, what fruit yeah, is it? What flavored? fruit is it? I, I want to know. Point the fruit. Like, show, go, let's go to Kroger. Yeah. And you point out the fruit that goes yeah. into that Mountain Dew. Which or at one least, of these or at least Mountain inspired Dew? it yeah. to have a certain flavor. Yeah. Just go to your local and produce section. Whatever the fuck Mountain Dew is, Baja Blast is just that with mouthwash. <laughs> right. That's all it is. Yes, I defy you. I dare you. Go to your local Peruder section and find the Mountain Dew fruit. Let's see. Oh, this was uh, a blogger that was writing about it. I thought it was great. It was very rich. So smaller slices is probably a, a good thing. But it pairs well with Baja Blast. No. I wouldn't imagine it does. That might be a little bit much. <laughs> I, I think I would get one or the other. Well, well, you mean the thing that tastes like the drink you're drinking yeah. pairs well with it? Wow. Yes. And would be and would be a salad with some Baja Blast gelato. Oh. Now he, now he, this I think this blogger is wants a job in the Taco Bell test kitchen. This blogger He's needs like, to get their sugar checked. I can do that job. I can I can mix four ingredients all day. Yeah. So I guess Taco Bell blasted out they they Baja blasted out their entire menu for the next year. What does that even mean? You gonna Baja Blast Taco? All the no, I was just saying that uh I was just using the term Baja Blast. Uh. There's there's no Baja Blast theme to it. But they they put it all out in advance of like what their plans are for the next year. And you see Taco Bell twenty twenty four, the Cantina menu will arrive. What does that mean? You can get. I mean, you can I finally get a, a Max Rebo, <laughs> Max Bo Rebo? <laughs> Can't even say it. <laughs> I want a Max Bo Rebo. <laughs> I want uh, no, the uh, no different okay. cantina. I want the Rebo burrito. <laughs> the Rebo burrito is probably what they would go with, but I think mine's better. But I think, yeah, Rebo Burrito is more mainstream. Give me a Beef Burri... <laughs> beef Burribo. Beef Burribo. <laughs> Give me a Burribo Supreme. <laughs> uh, cantina, yeah, they're doing Cantina chicken bowls, chicken burritos, chicken quesadillas, chicken tacos. 
I guess that's more probably like street style. Cheesy chicken crispinata. What? You're just make. I mean, now that you're just making up words. It's an empanada with cheese and chicken. How about crispy chicken nuggets? No. Why? I'm never. I'm never Why? I don't know. Never. Don't. Don't. No. The only reason I get chicken from Taco Bell is because you guys mash it up and cook the hell out of it. Trust me, I don't <laughs> understand Del Taco with the fries. I don't understand Damn. the nacho fries. Fries are not. And it's fries standard. Right? They offer chips and queso as a side with your tacos when you get the meal. That's an offer, but the standard is the fries with your fucking taco. Why? I'll ask for fries if I have a hankering, but yeah. like chips and queso should be the standard. Yes, I was not at this meeting. Making me use five extra words <laughs> to drive through. Ooh, yeah. but, but if you could dip it in a little jalapeno honey mustard. Stay in your lane, Taco Bell. Wendy's has the nugget game locked. All right? It goes Wendy's, McDonald's, everybody else. Okay? You don't need to join that game. Although Chick-fil-A, I've heard their nuggets are outstanding. Yeah. Everyone's just... They're still doing the chicken sandwich craze, huh? Like... Now McDonald's has got a new chicken sandwich. It sells, man. Yeah. I you, tried it. I was like, "What? this is what people are excited about? It's because it's a big-ass piece of chicken. That's why people like it. But a cheesy street chalupa. I think now, street, that sounds like something you get behind the Taco Bell. Does, yeah. I think you should leave I'll, street out of that one back, in particular. I'll, I'll give you... I gave her the cheesy street chalupa. Well, street tacos are called street tacos because tacos are a street food, right? That's their origin. The type of taco that you get as a street taco in Mexico, they would call that a taco. Yes. The type of taco that we usually eat in the U.S., they would probably call an American taco or a gringo taco or... Hey, what the fuck is a walking taco? Or a dad taco. I think I thought I don't know, like just a taco that probably I've, that's closed on one end, so you can I've walk with it and not spill it, all over the place. Is it just chili in a bag of corn chips? What? That's, that doesn't make sense. But my point being that oh, street actually. taco is a certain thing. Street chalupa is not, and chalupas aren't normally a thing that I would see on the street and be like, "Yeah, let's go get some chalupas off the corner." Oh, that you know what. Looks like Baja Blast Gelato is an actual thing and will be coming out in September. So walking tacos where you take a snack-sized bag of Fritos or any type of corn chip and crush them up, open the bag and fill it with taco meat and all of your favorite taco toppings. Nah. You can just eat a taco. You can walk fine with that. <laughs> no, but this one keeps your hands clean and you get a fork. I, yeah. can, I can see the appeal of this. I think if I wanted Cheetos and I didn't want to get my hands dirty, yeah, I could see the appeal. It really came out. The Flamin' Hot movie... Like, it's done. It's out. The, a movie about the guy who, quote unquote, invented flaming hot Fritos. Or Cheetos, I mean. Well, what's on? What's it? It's got on Rotten Tomatoes. Which doesn't make any sense to me. That, first of all, that, that could, the, are you telling me this guy, like, went to the company with an idea to, like, hey, make your food spicy and then became something rich? Anything off of that? Not only is this movie out, it came out last year. 69 with critics, 88 with the audience. I know. I don't know. This recent uh, spate of business origin movies, I know that I know that some of them are worth watching. Some of them are really praised, but most of them are just garbage. Yeah, I've heard the Nike movie was terrible. Oh, yeah, that came and went. Mm-hmm. How about an ice cream chocolate taco? Yes, please. Because didn't Choco Taco, they, uh, yeah, they were a couple of years ago Wasn't now. Choco Taco and ice they cream? They discontinued it. What? Yeah, they discontinued Why the Choco Taco. I think, I think we talked about Why? it on this Why would they do that? I don't know. They weren't popular. What? Yeah. If people never, like, do people not have mouths and taste buds? Yeah. So the, this looks really good too. There's a picture of it. It's like a waffle cone taco. Dipped in chocolate. Like, I want that now. Taco Bell, and they said, I guess this is coming out. Let's see. Uh, Taco Bell notes this product is still in the testing phase, but it was served at the Live Moss Live event in Las Vegas. How long does it taste? To, how long does it take to test a cha- it's, it's a, ta- it's a taco taco. You'd be surprised. <laughs> 
especially if they're making it in house. It's I could get into all the minutia. Yeah. I used to do that kind of stuff for a living. Plus, with something like that, you also it's not just the cost of developing and and producing the thing, but then like do they all have freezer freezer storage ready to go? Like they'll probably all have to get like mini fridges, oh, Taco mini Bell. freezers. You know they got a freezer. Yeah, they got a freezer, but you're not going to run back to the freezer for it all the time. They probably have, you know, they'll have a little display thing. I guess Killer Mike was actually arrested. Although I don't think any of the charges are actually going to stick. Well, he's rich. He'll be fine. Yeah, he's fine. Oof. Yeah, yeah. They actually took him to jail. Damn. By the way, bailed out and shit. So far, suspicions right. Uh, As of right now on Rotten Tomatoes, the Bob Marley has a forty-two with critics. Dang. Nothing with the audience, dude. Nothing with that. Hasn't it? I thought it came out last weekend, or is it? It probably uh, is coming out this weekend, and the review embargo's up. That's why it's got nothing on on uh, viewers. It says it's in theaters. Really? Mm-hmm. And nobody's even... It doesn't even have enough re, uh, viewer I mean, reviews. We were both saying last week how it did look like it was going to be a giant piece of shit. I can't... I, didn't, I have not heard anybody say, I'm excited to see that. <laughs> well, podcast I listened to pointed out the actor that's playing him is 6'2", and Bob Marley was like 5'4". There's your first... Yeah, that's a that's a conundrum. That's difficult to like if you gotta short it, like Tom Cruise you can put it on an apple crate. But this what like you're gonna put everybody else on apple crates? Yeah, right. <laughs> was he that short though? Five two? He was like five four, five five. Mm-hmm. Also two, this motherfucker's dark. Bob Marley he had a white mom. Yeah. Yes, but this actor knows how to portray Getting a spark of inspiration for a song that will sell millions. He can show us that moment, that magical moment that we all know happens in real life all the yeah. fucking time when you're writing songs. Fan fiction. So, oh, speaking of writing songs, Neil Young's uh, going to be touring the U.S. And guess where he's making a stop? Detroit? Guess, no, uh, maybe. I don't know. But there's a specific state that he's going to make a stop in for the first time ever. Ever? Hawaii. Nope. Alaska. Nope. He's uh, Florida. He's even voiced his opinions on uh, why in song why he won't go to the state and have it responded to. Oh, uh, 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 Alabama. That's right. In a song called Alabama. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to be playing Huntsville, Alabama. He's never played in Alabama before. Be interesting to see what kind of uh, reception he'll get. Well, his music's back on Spotify, so he knows he knows how to. Uh, we know he knows how to flip flop. Wait a minute. Oh, it's his first time playing Huntsville. He's oh, played Alabama okay. like, rarely, but a couple times. Ah, yeah, three times before. Okay, well, fuck you. <laughs> you got clickbaited. What was the headline? Neil Young plays Alabama for the first time in 15 years. Uh, to play concert in this Alabama city for the first time ever. Ah. So, so yeah, he'll be returning to Alabama, a rare uh, visit He's to the play state. Southern Man? Yeah, I wonder, does he play Southern Man or Alabama? You know what? If Neil Young had a sense of humor, which I'm not sure he does. <laughs> right. Um. It seems like he's a blast at parties. Yeah. Uh, I would play the fucking the Skinnerd song, right? The uh, Sweet Home Alabama. I would just go there and play Sweet Home Alabama. And get him shot. Yeah. The song that like calls him out and yeah. name multiple times is like, Neil Young, fuck you. Fuck you, Neil Young. Hey, you know what this song's about? It's about you, Neil Young. Fuck you. <laughs> like, there's no... There's no two ways about that song. It's true. But, yeah, speaking of returning also, there's Jon Stewart coming back. I mean, they're... Coming back to a show after being gone for nine years, which I was like, wow, it's been nine years since I watched The Daily Show. Exactly. (laughs) And they have to be so fucked. They looked for an entire year, couldn't find a host, and then just, "Eh, let's let's bring back the old host. You do realize that's all they were doing in 2023. They were yeah. they had guest host stints. They were trying to find Trevor Noah's replacement. Yeah, 
and their decision was the guy before Trevor Noah. Yeah. And John Stewart's just like popping in. Oh, what's going? You guys find anyone yet? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, no one wants this job, huh? Well, that's the thing. You remember why he left, right? He was just, he said it's a grind to do it five days a week. And he'd been doing it for like 20 years. Well, is he is he coming back full time? No, he's just, they, com- just Mondays. Just Mondays. So somebody else is hosting the rest of the week, the, or it's only going to be a Monday the, show. The rest of the Daily Show news team is handling the rest of the week. Yeah, no, cancel the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, people, make it a Monday show. I know it's called the Daily Show, but you're on Comedy Central, so it's perfectly appropriate for you to go one day and say, "Well, that's the day the Daily Show is on," right? Because it's not. Technically accurate because you're not on Saturdays or Sundays. So fuck off. Or did they even do Fridays? No, they were never on on Fridays. Yeah, it was Monday not, through Thursday. Right, it was on Monday through Thursday. Like, you know, Bill Maher has great success. He went from doing the same shit that you were doing. Now he got fired from that job, but he went on to do like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. This is one. Let's just focus all of our so, quality into one show so a week. John Oliver. Yeah, came from the same show. Yeah. One day a week. If, if John only wants to do it one day a week, then fuck it. Cancel the rest of... What the fuck are you doing? Well, they're trying to pick up the pieces from having somebody who wasn't funny. I guess they're, they're trying years. to be relevant. Yeah. You should have you just know. had a better host for the previous eight years. And I'm... You know, Comedy Central has been extremely lucky in that it's got some great and amazing shows that have popped up on a, on its network. But I, I use that word purposely, lucky, because I think that's what it is. I think it's just pure dumb luck. They don't know. I don't think they've ever known what makes them successful in any way. I think they just throw shit at the wall and like, oh, my God, like the show actually works. I don't know. South Park's been out for 25 years. Yeah. No, they, I'm, I'm not saying that they don't, that they can't produce good content. I'm saying that. They don't, they don't curate content. They don't seem to have any idea what's going to be successful. They say yes to a lot of random things and then some of them are successful and they are completely surprised and cannot reproduce those results. Maybe try putting, you know, comedians in charge of it instead of, you know, people who have nothing but boardroom experience. Yeah. That's another conversation. Like at no point whenever I hear Adam Carolla talk about his old bosses at Comedy Central is, anybody's name a comedian yeah it's like some nameless executive from like 20 years ago it's not nope. somebody from comedy you would have heard of yeah yeah yeah. i was listening to gilbert and he had it was obviously an old joke because he's dead but he had uh jackie uh, what's uh jackie the joke man mm-hmm. martlin is it martling or martlin martling martling yeah yeah uh, i mean you can just imagine between those two they're just cracking each other up oh um, Gilbert was doing his, uh, what does he call it? He does Andrew Dice Clay, but he throws his own name in there somewhere, like Andrew Gill Clay or something like that. <laughs> or, I can't remember what he calls it. But it's just like a really bad Dice impression. And never finishes a joke. He just goes, gah, 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 gah. And it's like, <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill to get some big gah, gah, gah. <laughs> So I was fucking this girl in the ass, and she was like, "Why won't you give me?" <laughs> oh, I used to love me some fucking Andrew Dice Clay, you know, when I was thirteen, though. I was gonna say, yeah, it was some edgy shit. That was edgy comedy, dirty nursery rhymes. Yeah, when you're twelve. Yeah. Oh, dude. We were 12, but there are plenty of people in their 20s and 30s who are like, this is edgy shit, man. Dirty nursery rhymes. You got to hear this shit. This is going to blow your mind. Give me Carlin. This guy, he smokes on stage with a leather jacket. Badass. I don't know. And he's not not that dude. I don't know. I know. It was a a caricature. Right. He only took 30 years to tell us all, but yeah, it was a caricature. (laughs) Uh you know, not, nothing is as it seems. I was uh, was reading about uh, Monty Python today because I guess Eric Idle went on a rampage recently and was just like he was basically doing what uh, what Cat Williams was doing a couple weeks ago, 
and just, you know, airing all the dirty laundry. I don't know what it is. Maybe, you know, maybe he had a, a close call, you know. Maybe there was a heart incident last night and he was mm-hmm. like, I better, I better get this shit out. I get, I want this account down now while I'm still walking this planet. People should know who it is and who isn't an asshole. Wow. God forbid I go to my grave without people knowing that John Cleese is really a fucking idiot. Yeah, take shots at uh, John Cleese, Terry Gilliam. I guess John Cleese, uh, his retort was like, well, we never liked each other. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just fine. You know, I think, I think we want to believe more or we just think it's less likely that people could hate each other and make comedy, right? Like we can understand the concept of people not liking each other, not getting along personally, but still being able to like write songs together as Fleetwood Mac or whoever, you know, like that, that's a dynamic that still, that makes sense to people, I think. But comedy, like you guys must, like if you're making each other laugh like that, you must be like best friends. You have to love each other. Not true. Yeah, it's just didn't, a it's a job like any other. Martin and Lewis hate each other. Sure. Oh, no, there's lots of yeah. There's, I think, most comedy duos, they're not friends. I mean, my world was crushed a month ago when they, if it was a couple months ago when Hall sued Oates. Like what? They're not buddies. I thought that's old news. They they've been like back and forth. Because I remember there was somebody was interviewing, this is like, I don't know, probably a decade ago now. But it was for, I think it was on like a YouTube show or some shit like that. And they were asking uh, Daryl Hall about John Oates. And, you know, what's what's the story there? How come you guys didn't talk? And he's like, well, we're fine. There's no, there's no beef. We, you know, we see each other now and then. We talk. You know, I know. I heard Christmas, him on Christmas cards on Bill Maher that, a few months shit. ago. He said like they're not friends; they're partners. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, this is just a, a dispute over publishing rights. I mean, it's, it's percentages. I think the reason it's like drama is because people, yeah, people want to think like, no, you're, but you're doing it for. You know, the lo- you're doing it for love of music, right? That's ultimately what. No, they're, it's a again, it's a fucking job, right? <laughs> Make music, get money. You know, you should be fairly compensated for that. And again, like you said, it's a business arrangement. It's a, yeah, at this point, I only think Ringo friends. sees Paul like once a decade. Like, hey, remember when we were in the Beatles? All right, cool. See you in another ten years. It's it. Eric Idle even took a shot at Netflix. It's, I don't know what this guy's replying to. Somebody, some rando is talking to Eric Idle on Twitter. He says, I honestly can't tell if this is a bit or if you're being sincere. I hope it's a bit and you're at least financially secure, if not wealthy. Oh, yeah, because he had made some comment about having to, at his age, still work uh, to get by or make a living or whatever, pay his bills. I can't imagine. That seems highly unlikely, but I guess if you're used to, you know, a certain lifestyle. The Flying Circus was 50 years ago, man. And the checks start drying up. You can blow money in 50 years. Yeah. Uh, He says, we own everything we ever made in Python, and I never dreamed that at this age the income streams would tail off so disastrously. But I guess if you put a... Gilliam child in as your manager, you should not be so surprised. One Gilliam is bad enough. Two can take out a company. So wow, he's not just taking a shot at Terry Gilliam, but at his kid who is apparently uh, taking over management of it. I don't know. If I... <laughs> I don't know any of the uh, the Pythons personally, but... Terry Gilliam, I would be the last person I would put in charge of the money. He seems the most insane, right? This is the guy who brought us fucking fear and loathing in Las Vegas. That this, this is true. This is the guy that was doing all your fucking crazy ass animated interstitials of you know the queen eating monsters that are <laughs> eating people that are being stepped on that are you know growing wings and flying off and farting. 
Who needs money to do all that? <laughs> uh, somebody says, I think Monty Python needs a Netflix documentary on the rise and fall of Monty Python. Seems like a little bit of a roller coaster between everyone. Money can really destroy relationships. Eric Idle responds, fuck Netflix and fuck documentaries. <laughs> I would have just left it as fuck whoever said, who's ever like telling me what I should be doing with Monty Python if mm-hmm. I were Eric Idle. Be like, who the fuck are you? And fuck off. Eric Idle's daughter, Lily, praises her father. I'm so proud of my dad for finally starting to share the truth. He has, he has always stood up to the bullies and narcissists and absolutely deserves reassurance and validation for doing so. Okay, but if he always stood up to bullies and narcissists, why is he only now just finally sharing his truth? <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Is he only now just finally sharing the truth, or has he always stood up to bullies and narcissists? <laughs> It's one or the other. It's a it's a confl- it's a conflicting sentence. Hey, That's whatever all. looks That's good on I'm social media. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just scan read anyways. You're like uh, truth, standing up, validation. Uh, like, yep. That's the type of shit that I need to write that I like because that's the type of person I am. That I mm-hmm. I approve and validate of that. You know, there's a, a comic book called Dope and Dan. That was from uh, seventy two to seventy three. No. Short lived, and uh, it was kind of a bootleg book. I heard, a, I saw this. I was watching Cartoonist Cafe, which is two illustrators and writers who host their own show, and they like to feature stuff that weirder stuff that comes across their desk. And this was uh, because of all the talk about like Mickey Mouse going into the or you know Steamboat Willie Mickey going into the public domain. Uh, they had this comic that was straight up said like Mickey Mouse on the cover and had, you know, the old style Mickey Mouse. He was, I don't know if it was lifted from something, but he was flying a plane and shooting and he had something strapped to the back of it and they had written dope on the bags. So I was like, if you, if the bags didn't say dope, if they had dollar signs instead, it could have just been a Disney cover, but inside was much different. <laughs> Inside, it was like, I don't know what the fuck was going on in this comic. There was some bug character who he meets a, a caterpillar lady, and she's got, uh, she's got a hundred legs, right? Her pimp introduces, uh, her to the, the bug. And he, say, he says, the woman with a hundred legs, he's like, I hope you got your energy up because that, you know what that means? She's got 50 clits. <laughs> and she like kind of, you know, reveals her underside. And it's like, yeah, just 50 like hairy 70s, bushy ass fucking vaginas all the way down. No, and this comic didn't last. And, and huh? he's just going down the line. Yeah, but this, uh, the Dope and Dan was featured in it, but he had his own books. And all of these are like, they're just straight up biting styles that were popular. Dope and Dan is, if you look him up, you'll see he looks like, uh, uh, what was the fucking cartoon back in the day with the lazy, uh, private in the army? I was always sleeping and, uh, hey, you do. Um, oh, Beetle Bailey? Beetle Bailey. Yeah. So Beetle Bailey, Dope and Dan. You see the similarities there. Yeah, but these were all like, uh, it's froze up on me. Let me see if I can open one in the browser. Wait, why does Dan Marino come up when I search dope and Dan? <laughs> was he, uh, is he a juicer? Was there a scandal? It's the eighties, probably. Yeah. Ted Richards dope and Dan. Oh, here we go. I got a comic strip. Oh, this one might be <laughs> not the best one to read today. So there's the strip. Yeah, I need my glasses. Just it looks like a. Let's see, let me blow this up a little bit so you can at least see. Looks oh, looks pretty on model for your standard. Like uh, what's the guy who did Beetle Bailey? Was it Mort? Uh, what's his name? Oh gosh, yeah. The <laughs> first first word balloon. So there's two. Guys in the army, and I guess they are all in the army. 
two of them are walking in one direction. There's a black dude walking in the other direction. And he says, one of the white dudes says to the other, look at that uppity. Mm -hmm. You can guess what comes next. Yeah. Uh, oh, and that's, that's our titular character there with the racial slur. That's dope and Dan himself. <coughs> I don't think he's getting the good shit, man. You need to get dope and Dan some more dope. He needs to chill the fuck out. And his buddy tells him, you ain't going to last long carrying on like that, Dan. Uh, and it says, Vietnam, June 1967. Dan's been in Nam for m one month and hasn't been getting along too good till he meets up with a short timer who hips him to the laws of survival. Oh, this is him getting introduced to it. This is the Dope and Dan origin story. So our friend with the sunglasses smoking the funny cigarette says, Here, smoke some of this shit. And he's puffing away on it. He says, Smoke some more. He's, hand, he's still smoking the joint he gave him, and he's giving him another joint. He says, How you feeling, redneck? And Dope and Dan's looking all dopey, and his nose is red for some reason. I thought that's more like a drinking thing. He says, yeah, I guess Nam ain't too bad. <laughs> I think that's your punchline right there. I mean, it does come at the end. This comic only lasted a year, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, infringing on other people's properties and not being funny <laughs> didn't yeah. sell. I guess like the, there was, one, I don't know the history of any they were talking about on the podcast, but like the one guy who is kind of the ringleader of all this, because there's a couple different like underground comic artists that were doing these knockoff type of, you know, adult themed kids properties. Mm -hmm. And the guy doing the Mickey Mouse stuff was like the kind of the main dude. And he certainly got, he got, uh, sued for, you know, seventies dollars, mind you, two million seventies mm -hmm. dollars. So that pretty much, uh, not only was this comic, they were, were they not making money off of these comics? They were costing them a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. Cause I can't imagine they were making two million bucks profit off of these comics. What's the other, who approved that? Hey, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's rip off other it's, people's stuff. It's underground comics. Nobody approves it. That's the best thing about it. It's, yeah. And you know, like, on it, the, they were going through like all the different artists that are in there, and there's some great stuff. Some of it was fantastic art, but it's just like, you know, nobody's going to publish it because it's fucking Daffy Duck, you know, railing a frog or something. Yeah. Plus, we see all that it's shit now on the Snorting internet. Coke. So, all right, so we should wrap up then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know why I just talk like Kool-Aid Man, but... <laughs> we'll do a reverse Kool-Aid Man. The bricks yeah. will... Actually, I... Yeah, I'm going to go through the wall, and it'll rebuild itself. Yeah. And I'll go backwards. I was going to try and, like, say, oh, yeah, backwards, but I think you could just flip it and say, yeah, oh. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I feel like you forgot something. <laughs> yeah, oh. And just walk backwards through a hole in the wall. <laughs> it's... Uh... That's how you do a reverse Kool-Aid man. Yeah, for more. That's not how you do it, kids. More stellar nuggets. You like gotta that. go behind the Taco Bell. It's only five yeah, bucks for that, but it's man. reverse. But it, it's only five because it's an add-on to the Kool-Aid man. You gotta get the Kool-Aid man first before they can do the reverse Kool-Aid man. If you if you've had one, you'd know what I'm talking about. But I won't. We, we ran out of time, yeah. so maybe next week. And if you got the money, spring for the yeah. cheesy street gordita. So it's like thirty altogether. Twenty-five bucks for the Kool-Aid man. Five bucks if you want it reversed at the end. Yeah. I'm telling you, spend the extra thirty for the cheesy street gordita. At the Weezy 420 on social media for more nuggets like that. Usually you pay extra to avoid the cheesy part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at uh, go go .net, There's a PayPal button if you want to help us out. And wherever you listen, if you can rate, review, share, tell somebody, whatever you got to do to let people know about the show, we would appreciate that. Please and thank you. And stay high. Stay high.
The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net.